So this is an interesting move, I thought. You know, uh, Zavian Collins, I think, uh, you know, he wasn't my number two by linebacker in the draft, but he was up there. I actually considered him or JOK, but I ended up going with JOK at number two. So I do like him a lot as a player. And I find it very fascinating because with Arizona, I think a lot of people thought they might go like defensive tackle here, but they're kind of getting a linebacker, which they could use. Uh, and, you know, getting a linebacker to pair with Isaiah Simmons, who's sort of that smaller linebacker and that have a giant linebacker who can help stop the run and kind of fills that, you know, if you do have a need of stopping the run, he could help do that. So he's a very interesting player. I want to get into the film study and really talk about what I like about him because, again, some people are going to say a reach, but at the same time, if you're getting a good player, you're getting a good player. So I don't really hate it at all. And uh, let's just get into the film study. So we'll start off with this play. What's going to end up happening is this is a very interesting one. This is going to really talk about one of my favorite things about Xavier Collins is I think he's just a high IQ player. I see him make a lot of smart decisions, which I've heard some people say that they disagree with that. I don't know. I don't know what they're watching. To me, I see him make a lot of smart reads. So what's going to happen on this play is you have really it's going to be the right guard. Uh, that is the guy, to, main guy to watch, the OSU right guard, because everyone else is getting accounted for, and Zayvon Collins is blitzing on this play, but what a lot of guys would do is they would just immediately blitz, and they wouldn't be patient, and sometimes being patient can really be the key thing to do. You let the offensive lineman figure out somebody to hit. You don't want to just stand there. You eventually want to find someone to hit, but when you do that, sometimes the blitzer can then run by you. And so watch how right when this play starts, you see him, that little hesitation got the guard to move over, and he runs in, pretty good burst, and he's able to get a sack right there. And again, he got through the gap quickly, and there was some contact at the line, but he's just such a big player that it's going to take more contact than that contact than that to bring him down. There's also something like this, where it's going to be uh, a it's going to be a running back screen to the bottom of the bottom of the screen and then you have a wide receiver who's going to run out and he's going to get in the way of Collins yes typically this is a mismatch but the advantage you have here is just sort of the element of surprise and it's a good angle it's kind of, you know a tough angle to get around for Collins so that's why you're doing it while well, yes I mean typically when a team has a linebacker who is going to be a you know a uh, an NFL player, typically in college, you want to put more attention on them. This situation, it kind of makes sense to put less, just given the angle. But watch how right when this play starts. So, you know, he does run over to step in front of Collins, and you see Collins, he's reading this play. So it's at this moment that he's figured out what this play is. He figures out it's going to be a screen pass, but there's a wide receiver that could get in his way, and he's got some room to run. And again, at 260 pounds, he's a big linebacker who I think a lot of people would be worried about. Does he have the speed to really get over there? But watch this burst where he runs in, basically bounces off contact, and makes an immediate tackle. So he can make those tackles very quickly, uh, which is nice to see. Uh, you know, he is, he's not quite this sideline to sideline linebacker like some people like. You know, he doesn't quite run the fastest. 40 yard dash but at the same time he uses his IQ to sort of give himself an extra second to get there so even if he's a little bit slower his high IQ can get him to some place quicker this plays another good example it's going to be a it's so again it's going to be the right guard that you have to take a look out for because the the center and the right tackle both have a guy to block at the line but the guard he's just going to run to the uh, to his right and eventually you know try to make basically make sure he blocks anyone in that area and for Collins, he's just going to try and beat him with speed. A lot of times in these situations, it's less about, you know, just overpowering someone and putting yourself in a better position. So if there is a big enough space, sometimes instead of just trying to, you know, run straight into him and overpower him or try to, you know, grab his wrist and you know, come up with some sort of move, if you can get through untouched, try and get through untouched. And again, watch this speed where he reads it quickly, makes a quick move and ends up getting a tackle for a safety. So uh, again, it's finding the right gap to run through and getting through there in a hurry. That's the goal. And whether it's because you run a faster 40 time or it's because you're just a smarter player and you know still have that great acceleration that Collins has, I don't really care which. And especially when you pair on how good of a tackler he is, there's a lot to like about him. Okay, now let's talk about this play. So, because I want to bring up this one just because I'm sure some of you will be saying, okay, well, Jackson, yes, that was very, very good. He does a good job of putting himself in position. But isn't that concerning? I mean, in the NFL level, it'll be more difficult to put yourself in the right position. Wouldn't you rather have a guy who can, you know, 
can make better tackles, who can get through gaps quicker, even if they're not quite as smart, because you're basically always going to get fooled at the NFL level to some degree. And first, I would say, no, I don't necessarily think that, because I care more about how quick you make decisions, not necessarily how difficult of a read it is. So, no. But also, I think that he can get through gaps quickly. I think he can make tackles quickly, because part of it is just acceleration, not just speed. As a linebacker, you're only running 40 yards if something goes very well or very, very poorly. So, what's going to end up happening on this one is really... Ideally, if he knew to play ahead of time, what he should do is try and get to the outside, get further towards the bottom of the screen. But he doesn't, and he is. This is going to be one of the times where he probably takes the wrong gap. Watch him step in, and you know, saying he took the wrong gap is unfair here because this is what his job is to do. But I'm just saying, you know, in a perfect world, he would have read the play and figured out how to get lower. To, but again, hard to really blame him. However, watch what he's still going to be able to do here, given the situation. He has the quick acceleration to get over there, and again, great tackling ability to make the tackle. Uh, just a really fantastic play by, uh, by, by Collins, and that's what I think he'll bring to the NFL. And one more play, you know, he's going to get most of his talk about what he can do in the running game, what he can do to stop screens, things of that nature, and part of that is just, again, the way he's built. When you're a 260-pound linebacker, you're probably going to be more of a run stopper than you are a, a coverage guy, but his coverage isn't horrible either. His coverage is fine, and in fact, he definitely made some splash plays in coverage. This one was one of them, so his job on this play is to cover the halfback. So, if the halfback is blocking, then what typically most guys, most teams will have you do is either drop back in the coverage or rush the passer. Sometimes they even give you the choice, just do what you think fits. But on this play, it, since the halfback is going to be blocking, Collins is going to at first start to rush the passer. Like watch, so halfback blocking, you see Collins, he starts to run in, but then he looks at the quarterback and kind of sees the quarterback's about to throw. And so he's saying, well, no point in continuing to rush the passer. That's not going to help me at this point. Might as well just stay back and drop into coverage and, you know, make sure that if he throws the ball my way, I can bat it down. This alone by Collins is just an incredible read, and it's a really smart play. So I already like this a ton just in that. But that's not all he's going to be able to do. Watch him step back, and he's going to get an interception right here. And not just that, he ends up returning it all the way for a touchdown. So uh, really, I think an incredible play. And again, just goes to show what he can do in so many facets of the game. And sometimes it is just through having, you know, higher football intelligence than a lot of his competition, which will it work in the NFL? I mean, hell yeah, it'll work in the NFL. Of course it does. High IQ absolutely works in the NFL. And so will just having someone who can be a big guy who's a really good tackler, who has quick burst and can apparently make a catch uh, when a ball is thrown right at him. He also did miss one that year as well when a ball was thrown right at him. So we'll say 50% uh, of the time he makes those plays. But yeah, I think there's a lot to like about him. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.